Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we've got my Synology network attached storage device out on the desk again today because we're going to be looking at a new Synology product. For many years, most Synology NAS devices have had an app on board called Surveillance Station that turns your NAS into a network security DVR and they support about 8,000 different cameras. But up until now, Synology didn't manufacture their own cameras, but now they do. This is the BC500. This is a bullet type camera. They also have another one that's in a turret design, but the guts inside are largely the same. And what we're gonna do in this video is take a look at this new camera and what it's all about, and also of course show you the image quality on it. And we will dive a little bit into Surveillance Station as we browse the camera's features, but I think we might come back and do an update on Surveillance Station because it's a topic we haven't covered in a while. Now I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Synology provided the camera and the NAS here that we're going to use with it free of charge to the channel. They are also an occasional sponsor here on the channel, but they are not sponsoring this video, nor did they review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this new camera is all about. Now the price point on these cameras is $219 here in the US. They're not yet available at the time I'm shooting this video, but they will be soon on May 10th of 2023. Now of note, the uh, turret camera there looks like a PTZ camera, but it is not. So you lock it into place when you install it. And if you want to change its angle, you got to go up and physically move it. Uh, so although it does look like it has more functionality than the bullet camera, it really doesn't. And again, their guts are largely the same internally. The big draw on this camera for Synology users is that the camera comes with the license. So typically on a NAS like the one I have here on the desk, you'll get Surveillance Station for free and you can connect two cameras to Surveillance Station, but adding more cameras usually requires you to buy a license. These cameras come with the license, so when you're using a Synology camera, you still have your two free slots available for other cameras and that is, I think, going to be a big draw here. And the cameras also come with a three-year warranty from Synology, so if you have a problem, you can get it back to them and get it rectified. Uh, these are IP67 rated for outdoor usage. You have two power input options. Uh, one, of course, is power over Ethernet, but you also have the ability to use DC power if you want through the barrel connector here. You will though have to bring your own source of power to the mix because they don't offer a power supply or a PoE injector in the box. Uh, one thing to be aware of though is that these are not battery powered and they do require an active network connection to be used. So these are very different than the WISE cameras and some of the other cheap ones out there that will send a notification out to the cloud. These do require a connection to the network and surveillance station running on the other end to record the imagery as it is being captured. But they do record 24 seven like a real security camera does. Now just one other note on wiring, there's no Wi-Fi option on this camera. So you do have to have it physically connected to your ethernet network for it to work. So you will be running ethernet cable outside your home, which is why it's always easiest to use PoE to power cameras like this that don't have a Wi-Fi option. They are really depending on you to terminate your wires at the time of installation. So as you can see here from this diagram, they want you terminating things after you slide the weatherproof housing over. It's really difficult to get a pre-terminated cable uh, through the tolerances of this weatherproofing that they have as part of the camera design here. So just get your crimpers out and make sure you've got some aptitude for ethernet crimping. It's not all that difficult, but again, pre-terminated cables are tricky with this one, so you'll need to probably terminate when you're out setting it up. Uh, these are five megapixel cameras. They shoot at 2880 by 1620 at 30 frames per second. They support H.264 and HEVC H.265. They have night vision on board with a 30 meter range to its illuminator, and that's about 100 feet. And I'll show you some examples of night vision footage in a little bit. So it's a good kind of entry level camera, I think, with a decent image quality that you'll see in a few minutes. But of course, you also get that license built in. They also have some AI built in for detecting vehicles and people. And I'll demonstrate that for you in a little bit. It provides a 110 degree field of view and that's on both cameras. So it is a pretty wide view. 
so you will need to plan things out appropriately if you want to get in closer you might need another camera for that but i'm sure synology will probably make more options available to people if these two cameras are successful in the marketplace one thing that's really interesting about these is that they have a built-in sd card slot as a backup so if it loses its connection to the NAS device, it can start recording onto the SD card. And as you can see on this one, the SD card is screwed in, so it's hard to get it out. You can also configure it to record motion events to the SD card when it has a connection to the NAS as well. So it's nice to have that little backup there. But of course, if somebody were to sever the power to the camera, uh, nothing will work. So now let's get this thing plugged in and connected back up to my NAS here. And remember, because we're running everything on the NAS device, this is all local. I'm not sending any data out to the cloud. It's all staying here on this device and on the SD card if we've enabled that option. One other thing to note is that uh, the camera and the NAS are made in Taiwan. I'm not sure if all of their products are made in Taiwan, but they are not made in China if your company or organization does have restrictions now on where this type of equipment is manufactured. So let me get this stuff set up outside and we'll see how it all works. So here we are on the desktop of my Synology NAS device. They've got a great web interface that we've covered in prior videos. What we're gonna do here is load up the surveillance station application, which will take us over to the surveillance station features. It kind of lives in its own web page here. And if I click on IP camera, what we'll see here is the uh, BC500 camera that I currently have set up outside. Now I have my camera connected over PoE and it doesn't seem to be consuming all that much power here on my network switch. So just under three watts right now for its overall consumption. If I click on the play button here, you can get an idea as to its visual quality. I'll make this a larger image here. I can zoom this in, so I can do a quick drag and zoom here just to show you the level of detail. So this is not quite a 4K camera, but you can pull out some detail just by doing a digital zoom. But remember, this camera does not have its own zooming capability, so you will be digital zooming all the way through. But you do get a good amount of detail here. There's also a microphone on the camera. And if you're curious as to what its microphone sounds like, have a listen with me about 10 feet away from the camera. Here is what the audio sounds like on the camera. I'm about 10 or 15 feet away from it. Sounds pretty good, I think. There's a lot of ambient noise around here, but it does pick up my voice and presumably the voice of others pretty well. And the way this system works is that by default, it will be continuously recording. So it will send data and imagery to your NAS device here 24 7 so even if something is not happening you still have a record of it and they have some really neat ways to search it which i'll show you in a little bit now one of the advantages of using the synology camera with the synology surveillance station is that surveillance station can also manage the firmware so if i go over here to more you can see although my camera is up to date at the moment it will download and install the latest firmware if i want automatically so i don't have to manage that on my own You'll also notice here, if I look at the licensing screen, that although I have a camera installed, I still have my free two licenses available because again, the camera comes with its own license. So you don't uh, eat up any license slots by using the Synology camera. Let's go back though to the camera and take a look at the configuration options. Most of the configuration is going to be done through surveillance station. This camera is really designed to work with it. So all the image adjustments and motion detection settings is all gonna be done in here and not in a separate control panel like you might have on a third party camera. Now my camera is configured at the moment in H.264 mode. The reason why I'm not using H.265 is that the web-based client that I'm using here doesn't support H.265 playback. They want you to download their desktop app to make use of that. So for the purposes of this video, and because I like working on the web browser versus their app, I'm going to leave it at H.264 for now. But I am running it at the full resolution at 30 frames per second. The bit rate is variable, which means depending on what's going on in the scene will depend on how much data is going to be consumed in storing the recordings. But of course, you do have the ability to adjust some of that. You also have audio controls here. You can turn the microphone off completely. They also have some noise cancellation settings too if you're getting a lot of background noise that you can adjust as well. Uh, so a lot of basic settings here. You can also adjust the overall look of the image. 
Although, of course, depending on the time of day will depend on what these settings might do. So I've been leaving everything at the default. And throughout day and night, it looks like it's been working pretty, pretty good. But you can, again, adjust things as you see fit. You also have some flicker adjustments. Depending on what uh, electrical system you're using, whether 60 or 50 hertz, you might want to adjust this if you've got LED lights that are flickering on the camera. You can uh, change some of the settings here to uh, minimize the flicker that you might see in an image. You can also control when it turns on its night vision mode. Right now, I've got mine set to go on auto, but you could schedule it if you'd rather do that. And you also get a look at what luminance levels the camera is currently detecting. And of course, you can customize things. So for example, I added my backyard label here to the camera so I know which one I'm looking at uh, whenever I want. You can also make some adjustments to its orientation here as well. Now, Live View, of course, will show you what uh, resolution you'd like to look at when you're watching the camera live. They have a lower resolution setting here called balanced. So if you are connecting over a cellular network or perhaps just on a bad Wi-Fi connection, you can bump the resolution down a bit uh, and still capture the high quality images on the recording. Now, speaking of recording, this will continuously record by default, which might use up a lot of disk space, but you can manage that a bit through the settings on a per camera basis. So here on the recording settings, right now I've got it set to uh, basically keep 30 days worth of recordings. And because by default it is continuously recording, it's going to need about 20 gigabytes per day in just that one camera to retain all of that data. Now this would probably be less if I switched over to the H.265 format, which is more efficient. But you can see the space requirements you've got to think about when you're setting up one of these 24-7 surveillance systems. But there are some scheduling options here where you can turn off continuous recording and only have it record motion events that take place, for example. So you can adjust things a little bit if you need to, but uh, you will spend some time, I think, initially getting everything tweaked to balance the amount of retention versus the amount of storage space that you have available to you. And of course, every camera adds additional requirements for storage. So just uh, be ready to make some calculations there and figure some of those things out. Now remember, this camera has a, an SD card on board and you can record onto that SD card with a few settings that you can adjust here in the edge recording section. Uh, so right now for when the NAS is disconnected, it will record continuously on the card until the NAS reconnects. You can also have it send motion detection events and audio detection events even when it is connected. So if you wanted to have an extra backup, it doesn't hurt to do this. And of course, it will recycle the footage. So what will happen here is that if you fill up the card with motion events, it'll start deleting the older ones to record the new ones. But this is a nice feature to have just in case something happens to your NAS or one of your uh, people knows where that NAS is, you will have the recording on the card and that's something you can refer back to and you can again uh, make all of these changes if you want. You will see some notes here in regards to tampering along with vehicle and people and intrusion detection and those things get configured over here. Uh, so in event detection is basically where you set the motion events. I have found that its motion sensor is very sensitive so what I did on mine was I edited the detection area because I found that we had a windy day the other day and the clouds moving and the trees moving here was enough to kind of set it off. So I moved the zone here to the lower section of the image, which did rectify things a bit. And what they have here in the course of you making these adjustments is a uh, indicator as to what would set things off right now. So as you can see, it's not detecting any motion at all but you can set the threshold here. And what's nice is that you can see uh, by adjusting the threshold what that actually means insofar as what will trigger an event versus what won't. So in the course of making adjustments here, you can figure out uh, what dial to turn here to minimize false alarms. But I did get a lot of them initially uh, before I jumped into this screen to start messing around with that. You also have audio detection, so this will determine what will trigger a recording based on sound. 
And as you can see here, I may want to adjust my threshold up a little bit higher because it is kind of noisy outside with all the animals running around in the springtime here. So that's something to adjust there. Uh, one thing I haven't played around with too much is the tampering section. And what this is, you can actually set up a virtual barrier that if anything crosses that barrier, it's going to set off a tamper alarm. So you could maybe set it on your refrigerator to keep the kids out of it, for example, and you would get notified every time that refrigerator is tampered with. Uh, people in vehicle detection is exactly what it sounds like. This is built into the camera, so it will have some smarts that it will be referring to when trying to figure out when a person enters the scene. I will show you some issues I'm having with that in a second, which I think need some firmware adjustments on, but for the most part, you can have it detect all people, or uh, you can have it detect people only when a crowd gathers, or only when somebody is loitering for a period of time. And again, this is all built into the camera and is not something the NASA is doing on its own. Additionally, you can detect vehicles as they're driving through, and you can also only have it trigger when a vehicle is hanging around for more than 10 minutes, for example. Uh, and you can also ignore vehicles that aren't moving. So lots of settings here that you can adjust uh, to get everything the way you want. Here's the intrusion detection. You can determine what would trigger an intrusion and kind of go from there and figuring out where that intrusion zone is. So lots of stuff here that's just built into the camera itself. And if you have one of the Synology Deep Learning NVRs, they have additional AI features that they bring to the mix like license plate detection and logging and all sorts of cool stuff. But if you just got a run-of-the-mill Synology device like I have here, uh, the AI features you just saw are what you're going to get. Let's take a look now and see what we can do with the recordings that the camera makes. All right, so let's jump into the monitor center. And what you're presented with when you first load this up is what your current camera view is. So this is the live image that we've got right now. And because we're recording continuously, I can go back in time. And every one of these little notches here is when it detected some kind of motion. And I'll talk about some of the false alarms I got with this in a little bit. What I wanted to do first, though, is show you the quality of the night vision. And if we go back to like 2 o'clock in the morning here, you can see what that looks like. So obviously, the illuminator is going to be much more effective closer to the camera than it is further away. All of these motion events are those bugs that are flying by throughout the evening. So there are some settings that I still need to adjust here because I was getting a ton of motion detection events even after I made some of the adjustments that I talked about earlier. But I've got a very dark backyard. So this is kind of an environment where you might need a uh, you know, brighter illumination of IR light to cover the rest of the yard there. Um, I can do my drag and zoom there so you can get a sense as to what's out there. So I could probably pick up some figure walking around in the, in the night there. But again, the illuminator, which only goes about 100 feet on this one, uh, probably is not enough for the coverage area of my backyard. But this would certainly work well in a vestibule or something like that. As we get closer to daylight here, you can see um, around, I don't know, around 4.30 in the morning, there's just a little bit of sun coming up that illuminates things a lot differently here. So if you have a bright full moon or just some good outdoor lighting, I think you should be able to pick up a good image even in the evening. But again, if it's totally dark like my backyard, I think you might need a little bit more there. Another cool feature, let me go to the live view here is the ability to do what they call an instant search. So let's say I wanted to see what happened over on this side of the image only. I can grab this and just select an area. So let me just drag this area here. And what it'll show me is all the motion events that took place only in this portion of the image, which I think is pretty helpful because if you have a box that went missing, you can select the area where the box once occupied and narrow down the footage just to things that we're in that zone. So I think that zone search is really useful, especially if you're in a pretty active environment and you just want to see what happened in one spot. You can see how quickly you can narrow down your search without having to browse through a lot of clips to get to that point. There's also a way to browse things through the recording app here. And so the recording list will give you all of the motion events that took place. And as you can see, I've got a lot of them here at night because of the bugs flying in front of the camera. So I still have some tweaking to do uh, with the sensitivity for the evening. But I can narrow things down with the AI searches. So you can see here, because the camera can flag people and vehicles, I have a much shorter list now of things that happened. So here's a motion event that was detected today around 9 a.m. 
and here I am with my dog and <laughs> getting pulled around everywhere. Uh, one thing that I noticed though is that it is also picking up the kid's playground as a person. That's what those red uh, squares indicate. Now it didn't pick up anything until there was motion involved, but I do think their model might need a little more tweaking here. So you can see here it picked me up. Uh, it does not pick up animals of note, but once the motion got going, it started thinking the playground was also a person. So they probably have some training to continue doing, and those are things that can be fixed with firmware updates in the future. But for the most part here, I think it did a pretty good job of only giving me examples of when a person uh, walked in front of the camera here and this would work well at night, provided you have ample illumination there as well. Now, they also have a mobile app called DS Cam that runs on the iPhone and on Android, and this gives you the ability to browse through all of the camera recordings that you have. Additionally, I can jump in here and do that smart search we were looking at earlier. So I can, again, select a portion of the screen that I want to pull out motion from, and here you go, we've got one example here, and I've got a few of the other ones that we looked at earlier. What's really cool about this too is that if you are out and about and connected up to your NAS and something happened while you're not in the office, you can download this onto your phone's library here just by clicking the download button. And what this will do is download that section of the video to your phone's library so you could email it out to a police officer, for example. So you do get a lot of the same functionality you would have on desktop, but on your phone here. So that'll do it for this look at the Synology BC500 camera. I'm pretty pleased with the quality of the video and audio that it records. I do think it needs a few tweaks when it comes to its motion sensitivity, along with the training that they've got for its AI model, but all of those things I think can be tweaked in firmware. I do wish the weather connector for the Ethernet was a little friendlier to pre-terminated cables, so that would be one thing I'd like to see adjusted in future iterations. But beyond that, the fact that you don't have to pay for a license, I think is a good deal when you are pairing it up with a surveillance station installation. And of course, you can mix and match this camera with third-party ones. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic AGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.